Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, I'm getting excited about this mill. Uh, this is part three of the Wells Index Model 40 milling machine rebuild. Uh, we're going to make some real progress today. We're going to do a lot of sanding and priming and painting and assembly work. Uh, I don't really think we'll get it running, but we're going to get close. Uh, still got some unresolved motor issues. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it. Uh, but for sure in part four we'll get it running. But anyway, let's get started. Okay, I've hand sanded a lot of the mill in the hard to get places. But this is a random orbit sander. I've got a uh, 40 grit on it. But this is a trick right here. I've got a vacuum cleaner hook to it. Uh, not only does it keep the dust down, it makes the sandpaper way more efficient. Uh, it's still a pretty big job to sand, but it's way easier than hand sanding. I think what I've got here is the original filler they put on the cast iron. I'm, I'm through the, uh, this dark gray is the original coat, I think. I think this is the filler I'm sanding on now, which is okay. And what I plan on doing is using a uh, automotive gray primer. That's this stuff right here. Refinish. 1K Primer Surfacer Gray. don't know what all that means. It's supposed to be 50-50 reduction. But it's pretty thick. And I'm going to spray that on there and use it as a filler for that. I'll probably prime it first. Some kind of metal primer. Well, there it is. Ready to paint. I'm waiting on uh, better weather because I want to do it outside. Uh, but it's been a real job uh, getting it cleaned up. Anyway, tomorrow I will spray some high fill automotive primer on it. Well, the wind has been blowing like crazy all day. I wanted to do this during the day with the garage door open and let some of this overspray get outside. Uh, but this evening the wind died down. So it was my opportunity to do this. Overall, I'm pleased. Uh, 
When you're spraying primer, you can see it when it's wet. You can tell if, uh, if you've got a lot of imperfections that are going to show up with the final coat. And it, it looked pretty good. Uh, there's a few imperfections. I'll, I'll sand on them and, and fix them. But uh, I think uh, tomorrow I might be able to give it a final coat. Tomorrow is paint day. Final coat. Well, I like uh, cleaning this thing up. That's the uh, power down feed. That right there uh, is a flex coupler and it, it pushes into the uh, gear to run the power down feed. Uh, I got to clean that up. And the uh, little belt guard for the power down feed right there. I got to clean that up. And besides the motor, that's everything. And there's the motor. It's not running right. Uh, if necessary, I'll replace it. But it needs a bearing and probably a capacitor. And I don't know how to wire it. So I think tomorrow I'm going to take it to the electric motor shop in town and see how to wire it because it was wired for 110 only in one direction and it had a drum switch that uh, would reverse or capable of reversing but no reverse so somebody's rewired it and I want to make that right get it clean there's all the parts I got cleaned up still got to do that uh, x-axis uh, lead screw clean that up there's the head right there uh, it's got a uh, very well done repair right there. That's brass. That was, that was broken off right there. Fortunately, it is well done. I'm not very good at brazing like that. Somebody did a really good job on that. Just to thin this 15% with acetone. I like it. Looks good. It's not perfect, but it looks good. Well, it's not perfect, but 
but I'm I'm happy with it. Got the wrong gib. There we go. That's a taper pin. I like it. Okay, this thing's going together pretty good. If you put watch part one, I think it's part one, where I took this head off, it was frozen. And uh, they stripped the gear out. Somebody's cranking on it right here. This is the, like a worm gear. And they stripped the teeth out. Well, the head never turns past horizontal either direction. So I'm going to cut another key so that I can still use that gear. And it'll only rotate half a turn. But, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Broken right there and right there in line with the... Uh, two set screw holes and I'm going to weld those up. It'd probably be strong enough without welding it but I just feel better if they're welded. I'm no expert on welding cast iron that's for sure but uh, I know it's fairly particular and you got to preheat and everything but even if I mess this up it's not cracked all the way through the gear. It'll probably hold without welding it. I just want to add a little added insurance. This head assembly here is made made really cool. It's got these bolts that have a slot where they go in. I think I'm going to lubricate them a little bit. It's got this little piece here that it's right there. It holds all those bolts so they can't come out. Pretty unique design.
Then I think where it was seized up was right here. So inside the column I'm going to put some anti-seize. Put a little bit right in here. Yeah, I like it. I'd say that's a lot more free than what it was. It wouldn't rotate before. Let's see if I can remember how this down feed assembly goes together. I think this has to go in here first. And this little block, maybe. There's a spring in there. And I think I was able to get that block out without the spring that goes into that little tab there. So at least like this. There's a little pin goes in there, pushes that block out. That. What engages that gear? Okay, now I've got to press that into there. I've got to keep those coupled while I press that in there. Hmm. Gotta press that in all the way. I'm not sure why it's not going in all the way. There we go. Just a snug fit. Ah, works good. All right. Oh, I got a bunch more parts here. Hopefully my memory doesn't fail me. This here is pretty cool. This is a dial here that has a bearing under with a spring under it to put tension on this dial. So there's some resistance so you can set it to zero. Very nice design. I think this piece goes on next. I end up taking some of this back off. It's probably a certain sequence that this stuff goes in and I can't remember.
There's holes in this uh, threaded rod here. I got to stick a Allen wrench through there and align the quill with that block. Hmm. Maybe in it. Live I am. Well, I'm missing a little set screw that goes in here. It keeps the slop out of this screw. I have no idea what I did with it. I found it. Well, this is not the right way to cut a key, but it should work. That'll work. Well, now I'm going to have to come up with a tapered pin to put in there and the holes are kind of messed up because I drilled it up, drilled it out and I took it apart. The pin was part way sheared. Well, this may be too hard to tap. I was going to weld it and then uh, drill it and ream it for a tapered pin. I don't have any tapered reamers. But if this doesn't work, I'll get one. Could put a roll pin in. Probably what I should do is align the shaft and thread into both of them and then put a uh, set screw in there and don't go all the way through so that the set screw gets tight. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, I got a couple of spacers in here and that clamp down in there. And then I'm going to thread most of the way through. I can put a long set screw in there. Pretty tough stuff. I didn't have a set screw and I may have to get one. Let's see if this button head clears. Hopefully that cover will clear this button head. If not, I'll put a, uh, I'll get a set screw that works.
Well, I've started cleaning up this motor. I don't know if it's any good yet. I haven't figured out how to wire it right. Oh, I was trying to pull that bearing off of there because it's kind of rough. But I can't seem to get it off of there. Like a little sleeve here. That's got to come off. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave that on there. Boy, it doesn't sound very good, does it? Well, I can't use paint remover on this part of the motor. Yeah. Not spending a lot of time on this motor because I don't know if it's any good yet. Well, these turned out better than expected. This one here is probably the, the worst one, but it's got some useful information, so I, I do want to keep them. Okay, I had this top pulley in place and I took it off to put this pin back in. That pin locks the upper pulley to lock the uh, quill so you can change collets. Just push it up and it locks. But I left that pulley off because it's got a bad bearing, a rough bearing, and I'm going to, I got one ordered and I'm going to put that bearing in. Uh, the tags look great. Right now we're going to put this table on. Oh jeez. Left hand thread.
And here we go. Thank you. This is a lock for the knee. A travel stop, table travel stop, hits that pin right there. I got a feeling this was homemade, but it's made. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it. I'm not sure what this is for. I think it has something to do with uh, if you have a power table. It's a something to uh, trip the uh, mechanism to turn off the uh, power feed. This end here has a place for a key. I guess you can put a uh, motorized drive on this end. Well, there's the motor. I still have not figured out the wiring on that, and I'm taking it to a motor shop tomorrow, and hopefully I'll figure that out. There's the motor plate. Uh, here's the parts that I still lack. That's part of the down feed guard and the down feed pulley. And I got this pulley off because I forgot to put a uh, pin right there. That's a locking pin goes up into that pulley and with the pulley on you can't get that locking pin in. It's got a larger head on it. Anyway, I took that pulley off and the bearings felt a little rough in there. So I've got this bearing here ordered and that goes in there and that'll that'll go on to the, uh, that's what drives the spindle and that's the motor pulley there. Uh, anyway, uh, that's what we lack on the mill. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. I'm really getting excited about trying it. Uh, next episode, we'll get it under power. Uh, I hope to have some uh, Brown and Sharp number nine collets for it by then. If not, I've got a uh, ER collet adapter. Uh, and we're gonna put some uh, wheels on it and make a stand. Bever sent me some uh, self-leveling casters. They're supposed to be 1,100 pounds each. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it, but I suspect they're going to be good. This mill weighs about 1,200 pounds, so four ought to be plenty adequate. Uh, but I'll be able to roll it around my shop and, uh, and level it and make it solid. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.